whatever comes after two. I don't really know. I'm basically... Okay, I was basically wasting time until we were online, and uh, according to Twitch, we are now. Okay, today we're going to try something that's um, extremely stupid, even for me. Now, Mathematica is a great program. I like it a lot. I've been using it since the uh, late 1980s, uh, back when it was a DOS program, and loved it even then. Um, but it is a commercial program, and that is something that means I can't, I can show you what to do with Mathematica, but if I do, you're not going to be able to duplicate it. So, uh, MathX, uh, MathX, which I will spell out here because it's a screen share, uh, is a uh, Python, which I don't like, bad language Python, uh, implementation of the Wolfram language, which means it's a cheap knockoff of Mathematica that doesn't work well, but it is free. Uh, and it's possible that with a little work, MathX will actually become something that's worth uh, not a piece of shit. Possibility. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try to install it. There's several issues here. Uh, one issue is it turns out that um, you need to, to get the graphics stuff to work, and that's kind of like 90% of it um, if you're going to run it from a browser. Uh, you need something called Scikit Image. So I'm going to just try to install it using... I'm going to first try to install Scikit Image, and that's just something I happen to know. <coughs> Excuse me. That you need, and I'm going to try to install it first in the hope that uh, when I install MathX, it'll be smart enough to um, it'll be f smart enough to see Scikit Images there. So um, let's go ahead and do this, and I'm doing a sudo because I want to sort of install it system wide, not just for me. So at least we're getting something here. Now, when I tried this on my main machine, it failed uh, because apparently. I've got like three different. Oh, oh, okay. Here we go. Um, let's see. Complete output detected. Only supports Python. Okay, okay. So now there is there is a. Um, oh God, I've got like ten versions of pip here. Um, which, by the way, shows you what a wonderful language uh, uh, Python is. In case you didn't know. I'm going to try just pip 3 on the hope that it picks the right one. Um, so let's see what happens. Hopefully this will work better. And I don't need to go further. Sci Sci is, is actually a pretty good um, good package for a uh, sucky language. So matplotlib. So I think we're doing a little bit better. Wavelets, by the way, is something I really want to look into. Wavelets allow you to control sort of Fourier analysis with variable uh, frequency, uh, which is more interesting than regular uh, Fourier analysis because it it's deeper. That that worked all right. So let's go for broke and install MathX. Ooh, they don't like the fact that I'm running it with root privileges. We'll screw them. And uh, MathX runs in both a um, command line version and a web browser version. The command line, oh wow. Rehash, I'm going to try to find. So let's see if we can, get the, in the command line version, it, it it looks like this. It can compute 100 factorial, which I think is the most important thing for any program to do. Um, it can solve simple problems like, um, let's see. If I want to solve x squared plus y squared equals 7 for y, it will correctly tell me these are the answers. Um, I can plot things, but there's going to be a problem here. So let's go ahead and plot a very simple function, graphics. The only problem here is it won't actually show you the graphics. Um, and I think you can actually do something like... Um, so now you have to be careful. Now, if you do image percent, this is going to try to convert the graphics into an image, but it's probably going to break. Uh, and I am just totally on top of that. So why don't we go ahead and do a MathX server which is a little bit worse, uh, but hopefully a little bit better. Yeah, I, I yes, I realize I just contradicted myself. Let's go ahead and see if we can kill off the other tabs here. We don't really need them. And localhost, I actually prefer to say 127001, but this should work. And here we go. Welcome to Mathics running on my local machine. It's beautiful. It's lovely. Everyone loves it. Now, in theory, I should be able to do this here. It, I won't, but... Dun, dun. Oh wow, shiny, it worked. Cool. Okay, so I don't know, it doesn't work on my real machine. Now this is a totally local version. Uh, it's running on port 8000, so it's not like I'm getting this off of a website. It looks like a website because it's, it's 
you know, local. Um, so we're going to do some work with this, and I guess, what do we, how do we download stuff? Save, um, I'm not sure I like where, uh, let me see where it's saving stuff, because I'm not sure I'm happy about that. I might want to get, uh, oh, we'll put this in the background so we don't have to deal with it. Um, I kind of wanted to save in my, um, in my, uh, Git hub, because that is, of course, where I put everything. Um, so let's see what just happened. Okay, so it's, they're going to use the local, uh, this is which, the local is sort of like a clever thing. Mm. Um, a clever way of sort of getting all programs to share stuff, but it never actually worked. Ooh. I'm not sure I like this. I want to, I kind of want to export. Um... I think dot export is looking no dot dump I think is what I'm looking for. All right. Uh, this probably reveals some bad stuff, but uh, this is uh, I guess where Mathix is saving stuff. Not crazy about this, so let's. Okay, 76 lines. So I'm going to actually just show that it's. Um, this, by the way, looks a lot like um, the other thing we we're looking at, Wolfram Cloud. Uh, the interface is a little bit nicer, and of course the really nice thing is that um, I'm keeping it local and I don't have to rely on a, on a cloud server uh, to do this. So, let's go. One of the really bad things this doesn't have is it doesn't have Mathematica's completion feature. Uh, you can't say question plot and it will tell you what that is. You can say, I think, do this. No, you can't. It doesn't even have Mathematica's um, completion. That's really, really bad, actually, and, and it's going to be something that we are not going to... Whoa! And it also likes to... Let me duplicate... Uh, um, so we want to say, like, uh, let's get a sphere going here. So z equals square root x squared plus y squared. Um, no, actually, I'm sorry, we, don't, we just plot the... Uh, x goes from minus 2 to 2, y goes from minus 2 to 2. You can also create a sphere more directly, but let's take a look at this real quickly here. Um, that does not look like a sphere. Um, because, of course, I meant to say x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Um, no, equals 5. Yeah, because I meant to say, like, this is what I meant to say. Try it again. Okay, and that's the upper part of a sphere uh, because I wonder if I can. Oh yeah, that looks nice. I can manipulate this. I wonder if I can stretch out the axis. This is one of the nice things uh, that um, you can do with Mathematica, but I, I rarely use it in graphics mode. Uh, so this is not exactly what I wanted. So I guess if I did 10 squared minus this. So let's see if we make a. Um, x squared plus y squared equals 4, uh, therefore f uh, 0 equals, oh, 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 hang on, hang on, um, x squared plus y squared equals 4, uh, so 0, e this is, actually, I'm not sure this is correct, let's see what this does, and, yeah, this, I think, I'm pretty sure this is a kind of sphere, um, but the, but the good, the thing I wanted to test is that, that you can, in fact, um, do 3D graphing with this, and you can. So now let's see what the options are here. Open, save, generate hash, which would be the normal normally save. Um, so I guess now let's see. Oh, Z2 save. Okay. Let's see if that grew um, by one line. That should not be x, y, z, x, y, z, two. There it is. Um, not not really crazy about that. The SQLness here. Uh, not at all crazy. Uh, the way I normally use Mathematica is I pull in local files, uh, so I don't have to uh, continue. Uh, 
you know, typing stuff all the time. That probably didn't make sense, but I'll show you what I mean. Now, I already have a BC lib that I want to go ahead and pull in here. And the normal way to do this would be in Mathematica would be bclib.m. Shift, and then it'll tell me um, that actually appears to have worked, kind of. We're going to see what, what's going on here in a minute. Okay, so HA and my... Uh, One of the nice things in the uh, command line version is you can actually do completions. Uh, but that doesn't seem to work here. Um, which, which actually, combined with the fact that you can't do something like this, really hurts. Because um, I'm looking for the thing that converts the hour angle to... Um, um, Converts the hour angle to elevation uh, to azimuth and elevation, which you can certainly do. And I'm actually wondering if I wonder if you load it with uh, and it's just bclib.m, and let's see if it does that. Unfortunately, it might continue and come to an end because yeah, that's what I was afraid was going to happen. Uh, because of course uh, that. Let's see if there's a I, uh, Mathematica lets you do mathematic mathics init file Mathematica init file uh, this sucker. I don't think mathics understands init file, and I am correct. Um, uh, let's see. Go to interactive shell. Oh, actually, so persist. So it's a little bit different, but not very different. And now from here, I could show you the file that I uh, h this one. Um, unfortunately, I can't tell you much about it. Um, I mean, um, and I don't actually have uh, documentation for it. I mean, I know what it does, but I don't have formal Mathematica documentation for it. Um, so, uh, so there's that. Um, now the ideal issue here would be if I could get this. Um, Going to see if there's anyone watching, just to warn them. That oh, hello there, person watching. I believe I have seen you previously uh, on a channel that I cannot mention, or I could mention, but I'm not going to. Did I just say your name out loud? Oh, I hope not. Uh, in any case, welcome. And if there's anything you could do to help, or if you want any help, let me know. Um, I'm gonna have to rerun that part of the tape. It's actually not a tape anymore. Videotape is kind of outdated, but I will rerun that to see if I said your name. I probably won't never do that. Okay. Um, so, the, so the goal here would be, it would be really nice to get this all working in a console, but also get graphics going. And that is the uh, the one the one sort of bugaboo I'm having right now is I cannot seem to get graphics going here. Um, not necessarily a huge deal. Because if I do use just the sort of uh, notation like this, um, I can I can sort of just you know keep changing a given file and not uh, and not have to worry about uh, you know and and then not have to um, and then just use the console version each time and uh, so you can just sort of redo this. I'm pretty sure it's going to complain now that I've defined this file defined stuff already, but it didn't complain. It's very nice actually. Um, and, and unfortunately, we're still inside of this sort of dual mode where we're uh, getting the output from the server, and but we're also inside the uh, actual uh, the actual uh, Mathics program itself. So let's go ahead and do this. Now, what I normally do is I export uh, these graphics, uh, and you just basically give it a file name. But I think it's going to complain to me now. Well, partly because I didn't. Okay, that, that's just a mistake now. Uh, oh, okay, hang on. So export to temp foo.ping out four. Or I could just use a percentage there because, let's see, only an image can be exported into an image file. So that, that kind of sucks. Now I'm wondering what I can export graphics into. Can I export it into an SVG file, which would be very, very ugly. That wasn't supposed to work. Um, 
And now, I'm going to bring up uh, more than one virtual stream, but let's see if I can do run through. Uh oh. Run, execute. Ah, uh, can I do an execute anywhere? Can I do uh, this? Yikes! I don't know if I can break out of this, uh, which is not a huge deal, by the way. Uh, if that's the only problem we're going to have, that that's fine. Um, so I'm kind of curious what this. I'm going to go ahead and bring up another X term for right now, but we're going to handle this problem. That no, actually, I'm not going to do that. It's the wrong size. Okay. Okay, so let's see if I can just suspend Mathematica. Say, so what is this foo dot thing that I've created? Uh, because uh, SVG files are, of course, text, we can, well, kind of text, we can look at them. Oh, wow. Um, I don't think XV will bring these up. I think XV doesn't like, uh, and I don't even know if display will bring them up. Image magic. I think it will, actually. Wow. Uh, no decode delegate for this. So there is a, um, well, there's SVG to PAM, which would probably convert it to what I need. Uh, there is a, there are native SVG viewers that I may have here. Um, and then again, there may not be. Let's, uh, let, there is, um, let's do this. SVG to PAM. And obviously, we're going to automate all of this if we can. We're not going to leave it like uh, uh, and then we'll just say temp foo dot pam uh, the only non in okay so we're gonna say I think this is how we have to do it uh, document is empty so it does not like that at all so let's see uh, I mean obviously I'd really like to um, not have to take it out to SVG I'd like to have to take it out you know to like ping or JPEG. So I'm going to do something here. Uh, oops, I didn't mean to do assist that at all. Um, so we're going to quit out of this. Cool, we can't. Control D will do that. Okay. And I think I'm going to stop the, I'm going to stop the Mathic server, I think. Um, I am going to bring up screen, finally. And unfortunately, my screen rec is not very good, so I'm going to get out of this. Uh, screen is a multiplexer that lets me run multiple terminals at the same time. Unfortunately, um, and I think I actually have a, a good screen rec file here, but if you don't have a good screen rec file, bad things happen. Ooh, where's my screen rec file? Okay, I'm not happy. Stand by. I'm going to figure out where my screen rec file is. Uh, you do want to sort of keep the keys. I need to sort of change the default keys because they kind of suck. Uh, and that's a technical term, by the way. Um, and I've got, let's see where I've got them. Um, okay, I actually do have uh, some, some, a fairly decent screen RC file uh, for my, um, for my virtual server. So let's go ahead and copy that. And that is going to be in, hey, believe it or not, this is going to get BC Info 3 dot screen. Oh no, it's root dot screenrc dot. Really? That's not good. Okay. So really when I did this, it should not have done this. Hello, hello, uh, name's Barry. Nice to see you, Mr. X Rick Ardo 2X. Uh, everything is going well, unless you happen to know something about uh, mathics that I don't know. Uh, you can help me out with that. Um, or if you're looking for help yourself, we can certainly uh, interrupt this stream, which is going terribly, like all of my streams do. And we could maybe do something with that. It's, it's up to you. Because I care about my viewers. I don't really care about my viewers. But at this exact point in time, I do. Let's see what we're saying. Thank you for the smiley face. OK. So for some reason, my screen RC file is not um, working. And that's actually somewhat surprising, because um, it's supposed to be automatic. So that, that is weird. I've never had that actually happen. Uh, and of course, you can al I can always go in here and do 
these commands by hand, con that I did control A colon. Uh, so now I'm doing BB, good, so th this is what I want. Um, I'm going to turn off the visual bell, B colon visual V bell off. So I don't know why the hell. Uh, and the audio bell, fortunately, is silent. I th you helped me with the start. Then I got the rest myself. Okay, this is fantastic, yeah. Uh, this is a reference to an older stream. I know you guys can't see chat out there because I don't have that special funky Streamlabs thing that I keep meaning to get. Um, but this is the person I helped with the checkers there is thanking me for the help, and I would say you're more than welcome. I'm glad I was able to help. Uh, is there anything I can help you with today, or uh, just uh, come by to say thank you, or... You know, I always feel like I should offer you a cup of tea, but uh, I don't think that's physically possible. Okay. So... Okay, whoa. Let's see. I saw you were streaming and just came to thank you. Oh, well, you were quite welcome. Glad I could help. Okay, um, let's get, go back. For some reason, the thing is getting a little bit slow here in the stream, and I might have to go and do something about that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create... Um, well, we don't actually have to do that. We can just run Mathix now. And now we're going to break it. Oh, if, I c if you can help me well, unless you happen... If you know Mathix, that's great. If you know... Um, it turns out, and I haven't even told the stream this yet, uh, the goal of this at some point is going to be uh, taking a look at an umbra cast by one planet or one object on another and determining whether the third object is uh, completely or partially within the, the umbra of the object cast between the two shadows. Um, it's an eclipse computation, basically, that I was trying to do with Mathematica. I probably could do it with Mathematica. I was hoping to do it in a more open source way with Mathix, and if I can do that, I can, if I can hurdle it all the way back to see uh, Spice, I can actually make, give a better answer to the one I gave earlier about uh, eclipsing, things eclipsing each other, and it might actually help me learn a little bit more about eclipses, although I'm going to assume that everything is spherical, which is not the case, the Earth is an ellipsoid, um, and uh, Sea Spice assumes everything is a triaxial ellipsoid, uh, which is of course also not true, and, and they're aware of it. Uh, I assume I make the additional simplification, everything is a sphere, which is going to throw off my calculations some as well. Um, oh, I know C, Java, VBNet, and Pascal. That, those are some awesome languages. Um, uh, I, I am using C for C spice, so um, do you know how to compute the intersection between a cone and a sphere in C? I'm not using Java, VBNet, or Pascal. I am trying to learn some JavaScript. That's very different from Java, of course. Uh, so the, 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 the kind of goal here would be, see if a given cone, uh, the answer was nope, uh, if a given cone intersects a given sphere, the sphere being a planet, the cone being something generated from two other planets, the umbral, the umbral cone, as it were. Okay, so going back here, let's see if we can get um, sort of the tramp here would be, so we cannot quite... Um, uh, the problem is I can't convert it to an image either, for some reason. It doesn't like that. Um, oh, okay, we don't have... Um, let's try this one more time. So now, I can export it. I guess the weird thing here is I can export it to not to a JPEG, because only an image can be exported to an image file. Um, so I can do this, I guess. Let me see if I can do import and see what it becomes. Oh, it's not supported. You can only you can send stuff to it. You can't can't uh, can't get stuff from it. There is probably a way to do this uh, that doesn't involve image, or maybe there's not actually. I don't really know. Maybe there is not. Um, what do you get? I mean, do you get the coordinates of what? Um, yeah, I mean, there's two things we need to know. One is, does the umbral cone hit the third object uh, at all? Uh, you know, do, does any part of the cone hit the object? And if it does, there's a partial eclipse. And the second question is, does the umbral cone completely cover the object, in which case there's a total eclipse of the object? 
so that is the um, that is the goal. It's it's not really that easy, I don't think, uh, because we're talking about. Uh, I mean, cones are actually fairly simple. Um, the problem starts when you look at them in three dimensions, and the cone can be in any direction. And then uh, you're trying to see if a cone intersects a sphere. There are formulas for this, um, but I'm trying to sort of derive, you know, sort of trying to understand how we get get to those formulas. Uh, or if there's a nice C library that does this, which there probably is, um, I could use that. I just basically need to get it into C spice somehow to see. Okay, um, type of input. Okay, okay. So the input would be. Um, let's see if we can. I don't know if we can do this here. I can just talk it out though. Okay, so uh, the input would be first of all two two spheres. In other words, we'd have x1, y1, z1, r1, meaning a sphere at x1, y1, z1, with a radius of r1. Second sphere at x2, y2, z2, with a radius of r2. And then we would um, we would draw a straight line between the centers of the spheres, and we would also draw a cone that touches both spheres right at the edges. So um, I might actually be able to bring up an image of that if if I need to. Um, and then those that um, the the line that you draw through those the through the edges of the two spheres will form a cone. Um, and maybe maybe I can actually be clever. And let's see. Let's see if I can draw this. So Mathic server. This will have to reload, of course. Uh, okay. Um, so let's see. Now there is, unfortunately, there is no. Um, I think this will represent a sphere at zero zero one. Uh, you can't really do anything with it unless you put it in a graphics three D object. So if this works, we should see a sphere at zero zero one. Sorry, zero 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 at the radius of one. Uh, then we can add a sphere at one two three with a radius of maybe point four. That's not going to work. Um, let's see. You can get rid of this. There. That. Okay. And now, this is where it gets tough. I'm, I want to draw like a line. Ooh, I keep forgetting you can do this. Um, which is one of the things. In mathematics you can do this, but I just remember. I'm just going to get these lined up a little bit. Maybe not. So I want to draw like a, a line that goes through here, through here, and will eventually, you know, and, and another line that goes from here, through here, and intersects over here somewhere. And that, um, this will form a cone. And if I'm really clever, I can figure out where that cone is, and I think I can actually. Um, let's see. I don't know if that helped, but okay. So now what we're gonna, we're gonna do and I think we can do all this at once. Um, we're going to define the line of T to be... Uh, okay, let's see. I, it's going to need to go through the centers of the two spheres. Uh, so it's going to be T times... It's going to be zero, zero, zero. Oh, it's going to be... Um, and then... T goes from zero to one. I don't know if this is going to work. I've never... Um, so it doesn't seem like my my attempt to plot the, and actually it's not what I meant to do. I meant to do a um, contour parametric plot 3D, and it doesn't seem like that either. Um, the idea is it was to make a line that joins this and this, um, and then it's gonna it's gonna continue, but. Um, I'm going to then try to draw a cone that goes from here through here through to the end of that. Um, and I'm trying to see if there's a way I can do this that, that makes sense. The T in the vars is T underscore. You mean over here? Uh, yes, that's how it's... This is how Mathematica does its input, sadly. Um, so, for example, if I... <coughs> excuse me, if I evaluate line of zero... I should get zero, 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 which I do. 
Um, if I evaluate line of 1, I should get uh, 1, 2, 3, because that's going to be my target point. Right, so that is how Mathematica does this, this weird... Um, and Mathix is trying to emulate Mathematica, so that is, that is okay. Um, I could, of course, just do over here, I'm pretty sure, um, a line... Zero, zero, zero to one, two, three. Oh, 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 oh. Didn't like that. A uh, line. Yeah, I don't know if it, it accepts a three line as an input. So the line is going to the middle of each sphere to the other. That is correct. Yes. It's going to join the two spheres uh, and then there's a way to draw a, um, the line's going to be the center of the cone. Um, so basically the, the, the cone is going to be circles in the plane. Yeah, okay, hang on. Okay, but how does the co cone appear? That's how the cone appears. Uh, it's, you're going to basically draw it as circles um, along the, boy, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to, trying to figure this out. In fact, you know what I think? Yeah, let's see. I'm going to try to see if I can make this... Um, unfortunately, I'm sort of doing this on the fly. I was going to do this at a much slower pace. Um, but it's going to be... Well, you know what? Let's actually see if we can cheat a little bit. And look at Umbro Cone, which is an actual thing. Um, so, okay, let's see. It's sort of like this. I'm going to find like a really good... Um, Good example. So this would be one object. This would be one object. This is the umbral cone here. They've drawn it kind of stupid, but uh, because the Earth has an atmosphere, but we're going to assume our planets do not have atmospheres. Um, I'm going to try find, trying to find a better uh, example. See this line here, and this line here. If you kept going, it would form a cone, and A is inside of that cone. The cone goes on forever in one direction. And I'm going to find a better uh, image for that. Uh, this is actually a pretty good image. I could make it full size. Uh, but this is basically what, you know, going from here to here, here to here. And that's the umbral cone. That's the umbra. And I think there's a lot other of examples of it, too. Um, so, yeah, this is basically the thing we're asking is, when the sun casts a shadow on the Earth, does the moon get caught in it? Obviously, during a lunar eclipse, by definition, the moon gets caught in it. Um, let's see. Okay, good. And just to let everybody, the viewers know, um, the, the, you know, whatever. Um, the, I have the, the, the program C-SPICE will tell me where, for example, um, the sun is and where Jupiter is. So I want to know if the shadow thrown by the sun onto Jupiter, so this would be Sun, this would be Jupiter, this would be one of Jupiter's moons like Io. So the question is, does the shadow that goes from the Sun through Jupiter touch Io, and if so, does it touch it like a partial eclipse only in one place, or does it cover all of Io? That is the question that we're asking. Uh, and it, oh, and this is actually a really good example of what I'm trying to do here too, um, because again, this is the umbral cone, and if this were where the planet were, it'd be fully covered in the umbral cone. Now, I don't know if there's examples of partial eclipses here, but, um, uh, and all these things have formulas, but the one problem with sea spice, let's see. So the planet in the left input is the sun, and the one on the right is the other input. That is correct. And there's a third input, which is um, the position of the moon, for example. So in this case, is sun, earth, moon, you would say yes. If you're on the moon, the earth is fully eclipsing the sun. That is correct. Uh, and if the moon were like over here somewhere, you would say that no, the, the Earth is not eclipsing the sun. Uh, it's actually a partial eclipse, but it, it turns out that doesn't really matter for us. Okay, cool. So we got the formulas. I mean, sorry, we got the, we know where these things are. We know where the sun and Earth are. Obviously, we'll need, you know, we'll, we need a formula, so they'll be abstract. We know where the moon is, uh, so we need to know, um, yeah, we basically need to know if the moon is within the shadow uh, cast by the other two objects. There is an other possibility uh, where if the smaller object is the one that's casting the light, um, 
the cone becomes bigger and bigger, uh, but it's still really the same idea. And I'm, I can't really find an example of that. Uh, it can. It is possible that it happens. Um, I, I think it's possible that it happens. Maybe it's not. Um, but anyway, the important case is going to be this one, the, the umbral cone. Okay, so your thoughts. Um, oh, wow, they have some, like, math here. Yeah, this is all good stuff. Um, but we're sort of looking for Cartesian coordinates, X, Y, Z, uh, and so on. Uh, this is this is good stuff from a geometrical standpoint. Uh, and, of course, all of this is in 3D, uh, but it turns out that you can actually s almost treat it like a 2D problem, almost. Um, so that I that is where we're going with it. And I totally lost the thread of what I was doing. Oh, yeah, we're trying to find that formula. And the, the problem is that C-Spice does not, um, is not a symbolic manipulator. Take a look here. Ah, I was thinking more that way. That is the other e example of, of where the, uh, the umbra keeps growing. Um, and that would be... THW 2D? The 2D? I mean, it's a projection into two dimensions, obviously. We, we treat them, but they're really spheres. I mean, they're not, it isn't 2D, but I think you can keep it in 2D, and I could be wrong about that. The 2D, yeah, the 2D would be like, well, this is like all these diagrams are two dimensional, even though they ultimately refer to uh, three dimensional objects. Okay, thinking. If you solve it in 2D, it doesn't quite, it helps, it does help the 3D. It, it sort of, the one problem here is uh, you can always choose your axes, so your x-axis is going through the center of the two spheres. The, the third object, however, um, d isn't necessarily on the x-axis. It could be behind or in front of the x-axis, and that's where, that's where there's a problem. Um, you can't guarantee that the, uh, the third object is going to be in an exact line with the other two. And that really kind of, that's where you have to sort of look into the 3D stuff. And, and the formula, um, basically what you want to do is create sort of a formula for the cone and then see if the, you know, if the center of the sphere is within R of that, uh, of that uh, cone. And again, I don't think that's difficult. Um, I don't, not saying it's easy, but I'm not, I don't think it's difficult. Uh, uh <coughs> and I actually did get part way to solving it um, using... Uh, let's see. I need to find it, but I did actually get part way to solving it through um, um, using Mathematica, and that was sort of where I was going to go with this. And it, oh, it is okay. So I'll bring that up real quick. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's actually in BC Eclipse, because th it, this really is an eclipse. That's what I'm really trying to compute. Okay, so let's see what you have to say here. Do you have a way to cut the spheres in a parallel way? I don't know what that means. I'm sorry, I don't understand what that is. Here's what I've done so far, and um, I'll just talk it through a little bit. Uh, the line T, this is a line that connects, well, okay, so we have two spheres. S and T with these uh, coordinates and radii. And, uh, radii. Um, the umbral point is on the connecting line. Ooh, I need to, I misspell connecting. Uh, an angular diameter of the two, I can't spell, spheres is equal. So it's we're basically where if you were at a point where one sphere would exactly touch the other. It would be like a, an a exact perfect eclipse. Um, so the mathematics here is um, the line that connects the two spheres uh, can be expressed like this. At zero, it's equal to um, S Y S Y. You know, at the S sphere, center of the S sphere. At one, it's equal to the center of the T sphere. But it can it keeps going after that. And it turns out that when T is equal to this number, S R over S R plus or minus T R, uh, it is an umbral point. Okay. So now, and this is where the umbral point occurs. The umbral angle, this is the, um, if you're standing at the umbral point, both of your spheres, both of S and T, have equal angular diameter. 
and this is what that equal angular diameter is equal to. Um, and and then so let's see. Yeah, and one idea I had was um, can you can you do a three dimensional rotation uh, so that the cone goes along the z axis? And then it would just be x squared plus y squared uh, equals, uh, you know, k times z, a constant times z. Because x squared plus y squared uh, equals z is, is a cone. Uh, did I calculate the cone? Er the cone is infinite. Um, unless you mean the area, uh, because the cone goes on forever beyond the two planets. Um, the cone, I mean, I could compute the area of the cone between a couple of things, but that's, I don't think that's helpful. Um, let's see, the umbra cone, right? I mean, the umbra cone here, for example, goes on forever in this direction, goes on forever in this direction. W it doesn't, it's not important after this, but it, it does sort of, unless you mean like this area right here. The small piece, I mean this umbra cone here. I did not. I mean, we could. It's not that hard. The area is going to be uh, one third. You can always do calculus, but it's one third uh, R H. So it's going to be that. That's going to be the area. Right, right, right. So yeah, I think I, I think I got it. Yeah, that's that's going to be the area. It's one third R R squared H. Okay, hang on. Pi R squared H divided by three. I wish I I, I should know that. So yes, we could compute the area of the umbral cone. Okay, so if we have the area of the umbral cone, how does that help us? Very exciting here. I wish you guys could see chat. I really am going to maybe um, get that Streamlabs overlay, which is interesting, which means you can see chat, but I still won't be able to see it because the overlay is done at the OBS step, not at the virtual machine step. Okay, if you get the area... Dun 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 And you know where it starts, the umbral point, yes. So we know the umbral point, which is right here, and the area of the umbral cone uh, to the to the first planet. Um that you should know. We can get those two numbers. Those are pretty easy to get actually. I mean uh, uh, it's not that hard to ca calculate those two numbers. Uh, so that gives us the area of the cone and the point where the cone begins or ends, depending on your point of view. And so the question is, using that area, how do we know if it's within a given, if it intersects a sphere that's somewhere in this area? Or it could be, the sphere could be way over here. Um, so, you know, it might not, it might not at all. Um, so how would we get that uh, formula? And do you want to run into Discord or something, if this is going to be helpful? Uh, by the way, I'm not sure how well your voice was heard last time. It was heard a little bit, but it's, it was very soft on the recording. Um, but it, it was hearable. If any zone of the sphere... Mm -hmm, touch... Well, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. When you said the area of the cone, do you mean like a number giving you the area? Or do you mean the... Uh, uh, and I guess it's actually going to be the volume of the cone. So you mean the actual formula for the inside of the cone, right? Which is which is gettable, but it, that's not easy. Yeah, the vo the formula for the cone um, is not easy. It's not super trivial. It's not impossible either. It's going to basically be uh, you need to take <laughs> for a given point in the center line. You need the plane perpendicular to that point, and then you draw a circle of radius whatever and that's the that's the that's the definition those are the points that are within the umbral cone uh, there might be an easier way to actually do that and that might be worth looking at um, I mean because for a standard code in X Y you know, in, the, in the XYZ position X squared plus Y squared less than Z is means you're inside the cone um, but of course so this is this is doable obviously because all we have to do is sort of twist our variables, uh, but it, th this is where the, the sort of interesting math occurs, is, well, what exactly is the formula if your, um, if your, you know, if your cone is not, 
is not uh, centered on the z-axis. And one way to do that is to simply take this vector and turn it and rotate it to the z-axis, which it turns out there's more than one way to do because um, we're not defining like the spin of what, uh, there's, there's multiple axes that, that'll do it. But that's sort of the, that's sort of the thinking I had is, yeah, we, we do a linear transformation. Uh, so the cone is now centered on the z-axis. And from there, this still won't necessarily hit the origin because we're only doing a, a rotation. We're not doing um, um, an affine transformation. We're not moving anything. But that should be enough. That should be good enough. Is that what you mean? Or did you have a smarter idea that I'm totally missing out on? Nope, that was the idea. Okay, and that is that is where I was going with it. Uh, so either a, a rotation, or we could actually just use formulas, it turns out, to just try to figure out, um, uh, because one, one thing we're going to have, and I was going to hopefully use, is uh, to find the plane that's perpendicular to a given line. Uh, well, that we know that that means the dot product of the, the line and any, any point, any vector in the plane, uh, from the center to the, you know, is going to have a dot product of zero because they're all—it's the plane that's perpendicular. Um, so that that is doable, um, and I think that's the approach I was going to take. Now, if there's a simpler approach, I mean, there's two ways to do it basically. One is to just mess with the ugly numbers. The second is to do a, a linear transformation so that this is all in the z. This is becomes the z-axis. Figure out the result and then do an inverse linear transformation uh, to get it back into the original coordinates. And then, um, actually, we don't even need to do that. We need to do a linear transformation and then see if the, f the, the problem becomes easier if uh, we have this on the z-axis. And I think then it does, because then it becomes x squared plus y squared less than z squared, and uh, you know uh, x minus whatever plus y minus whatever plus z minus whatever squared, all of those, is less than r squared. In other words, it's inside the sphere, and it's inside the cone. Um, the, the problem is that is, I think that is a pretty ugly, that's what I was going to look at. Th this is one of the things I was going to explore, is to see um, what is the formula for something that is both inside a sphere and inside a cone, um, you know, given the sort of very basic definitions of cone and sphere. So uh, let's see if we can do that. I think I got stuck now here. I'm so lost. Okay, let's see. Um, yeah, I was trying to plot some of this stuff, and unfortunately one of the problems is, um, do I mean line 3D? One of the problems is I don't really fully understand mathics. I do understand Mathematica. No, they didn't like that. Yeah. And so, so mathi Mathematica and Mathics are not quite the same thing, unfortunately. So let me go back. There is a way to draw a line in three dimensions, but a three-dimensional line, I mean, Really, a line is a one-dimensional object. You can't even really draw it in two dimensions. It would be infinitely thin. So you can't draw it in three dimensions because it would be infinitely, I don't know, thinner, I guess, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Um, so, so it is a hack to say that you can do this at all. But, um, but and then, of course, I was going to try to draw the cones and sort of, you know, motivate the, the whole discussion of, uh, this is actually not by design, but this is actually a really nice sort of uh, way of doing a, a rotation. Because we can, uh, and my spheres are also the wrong colors and stuff, but that I think I can, I can fix. Okay, if you have any more comments, let me know. Um, I'm keeping the chat up here on the side. Let me see if I can do something to make, um, shoot, hang on. Okay. I'm trying to put a separator in here because I can only see your name on there. So right now, if you type in something new, I'm going to have a hard time. Um, okay, now I'll be able to see it because it'll be under the this me. <laughs> this me? Oh, ugh. Ugh, say hi. Um, okay. Um, alrighty. So let's get back to doing this. And I guess somewhere I should probably bring up the Mathix documentation. Um... The fact that I got this far, I'm actually pretty impressed. Um, and 
I wonder if they have arrows. Well, let's find out. Let's let's actually not be. Um, Mathics 3D graphics. Graphics 3D. Now Google's gonna try to turn this into mathematics. Oh no, I'm. I like this. Um, polygon. Okay, so where's the docs? <laughs> Well, that's, of course I could create a cylinder that's a very thin polygon, but there should be a, uh, should be a better way of doing this. Um, okay, maybe I should just download the Mathix documentation uh, instead of trying to go piecemeal here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'll use it online, download, installation guide, documentation. Uh, I hate PDFs. Uh, I wonder if I can download the HTML documentation. And the answer to that will probably be no, I cannot. But, ooh, shiny. Okay, well, maybe, maybe, maybe this will be fine. Cuboid, graphics 3D, line 3D, sphere, uh, polygon. Line 3D box. So that, and by the way, notice the beautiful documentation here of there being no documentation. So I guess uh, what I'm going to do here is line 3D box will probably do what I want. And again, this is really ghetto. I, I really need to, um, I really need to be doing, uh, yay, 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 yay. I really need to be doing this in a, okay, hello again. Love the docs. Isn't that, they are gorgeous. I mean, this is, this is the kind of documentation I want to write one day. Um, but I'm going to assume it's going to be the, you know, I'm hoping that doesn't require a thickness or anything, because I don't have that. No, it doesn't like that. Um, so do we need to, f oh, oh, actually there's, no, this is fine. So this is two elements. Now, sometimes in Mathematica you have to do this. It's only one, it only takes one argument. Hey, there it is. That was actually pretty cool. Um, so, okay, so now we, I want to draw the, um, I want to draw the umbral cone. Uh, yeah, and for, uh, part of this is just figuring out the translation between Mathematica and Mathix. Uh, I don't know if it's worth it, but I don't know if life is worth it, so, you know, whatever. And now I'm going to try to be more clever and maybe one of the parts of being more clever is not continuously uh, changing this, but actually creating something that I can use in GitHub. So let's do that. Let me see. Do I have a? I have a Mathematica. Do I want to just put it in here? No. Mathix Playground. Dot. Oh, Mathix. And Emacs will automatically, not automatically, but they will create the directory um, if, if you need it. Uh, okay, so so now the only thing I need to put in here is like something really basic just to make sure I can do, can do this. And if this works, then I can just change this file all the time and, and just keep reusing it. So let's do this, get rid of this, get rid of this, why well, can't get rid of this? So it's going to be... <laughs> And if this works, gorgeous. Now I just need to change this and, and keep coming back here. And I wish I had FVWM in a usable state here, but I do not. So we're going to kind of have to do this little bit of a, a game here. OK, so graphics 3D. Um, and at some point, I'm going to generalize this, because I don't obviously want all my spheres to be in one place. You should never keep all your chickens in one basket and, and your eggs in one basket, and you should never keep your spheres in one location, uh, is something you almost never hear people say. So here we go. In graphics 3D, actually, I'm going to be a little bit nice with formatting here. Uh, since I'm using multiple objects, I'm going to do this, then this, and then this. That's not bad, actually. I like that. I like that. It's very nice. Okay, so now something I can do with Mathematica is I can do color 
because I don't necessarily want my spheres to be uh, this sort of weird color. Um, and we have something useful. Oh, this looks like something I shouldn't be clicking on. Okay, give me one second to look at it here. Unfortunately, my chat is actually running on a di on my main machine, so I don't actually see it in the virtual machine. So you can't see what I'm doing right now. I'm going to find the um, uh, or maybe I'm, I'm going to look at the uh, doc the document you just uh, that excerpt just sent me. And this might be good, might be terrible. It's from NASA, so it's probably not pornography. Not that I'm objecting if it were pornography. Um, so let me take a look here. Even it's 1995. This this could be useful. Okay, I'm looking at another machine real quick. Oh, spacecraft Umbra and Penumbra shadow points. This is probably way harder than what I'm trying to do. Um, yeah. Oh, this is actually interesting. Wow. Wow. You can't see this, so you don't know what it's doing, but it's actually, um, okay. That is a fantastic link, and I like it, and I'm going to, um, so I know, that's why I said it's probably not porn. Um, one of my goals with all of this is to learn and to teach. Well, mo more to learn than to teach. Um, so I love your document. In fact, I think I'm going to... I'm going to bring it over here uh, in a very cheating method. I'm going to copy it to my Git briefly, and since I'm sharing my Git here, it'll show up. But I'm going to actually move it out of my... Uh, so, so it's going to be right there. But now I'm going to move it out of the Git to... Um, just my home directory. And then from my home directory, I can show everyone what it is. And let's do that here real quick. So this is the method of calculation for penumbra. And now, I thought it was going to be for spa spacecraft are not spherical. They're not even ellipsoid. Um, so I thought they were going to go with that. But if you look over here, this is a really good uh, example of what the umbral cone is. See page nine. Wow, you were on top of this. Um, okay. Umbral cone, geno the penumbral cone we don't really care about. So x uh, chi of u, that x is actually a chi, um, is this times, so wh what are these numbers though? Um, I mean, this, this doesn't have any um, variables that tell you about anything. So let's take a look. Maybe this is, oh, here we go. Very nice. This is pretty much exactly what I was trying to do. Um, so, chi of zoo. Is that alpha of zoo? Chi, chi of zoo. So there's that distance, that distance, dp, ds. Um, yeah, and I think I came up with this formula in Mathematica on my own. It, it just, I mean, this is kind of a basic one. Uh, so now, this is really nice, thank you. Um, so it's going to be chi of p. So chi of u is this distance. Chi of p is, I guess, another distance if they're being consistent. Alpha of p, is there more of a figure here? Oh, here we go. Alpha of p is this angle. Um, oh, this is the penumbra, sorry. That's the penumbra. Um, alpha of u is the, uh, right, this is the arc sine of the, okay, cool, that's the angle. And chai, where's chai zu here? This distance. Okay, cool. Now, let's take a quick look here. This is really nice, thank you. I and mean, this is exactly what I'm trying to do. Time in penumbra, quaternions, oh my god. With the angle you can get it, um, yes, yes. And I do have the angle in some of my work from, um, from Mathematica. Uh, 
But I d still don't think that's enough to actually get it. Um, actually, hang on, is it? So you're saying if I know the um, the central point and the angle, I know it's amazing, isn't it? Um, <laughs> okay, so you're saying if I know the angle between the uh, central point of the um, uh, the the, umbral, the tip of the um, umbral cone and the uh, planet that I'm looking at, uh, the planet in print obscure, the the eclipse target, uh, that angle. Uh, if it's greater than the angle of the... See, the problem there is... Um, <laughs> the problem there is that would work if the, pla if the, uh, if the uh, third object were a point, not a sphere. Uh, I'm not sure how to take the... Uh, oh, but you know what? You could take the angular diameter from the, the conal point and decide if that is greater or less than. Um, yeah, uh, well, yeah, you can you can draw the cone. Sure. Well, yeah, I, I can draw the cone. I think I can draw the cone anyway. That one I might be okay with. the The question is, where does the mathematical formula that I need, given these uh, three things, to say whether it's obscured or not, whether or not there's an eclipse? Um, and that might be difficult. Now, I think I ran into this issue earlier. It's quite possible that the um, uh, let's see. So the cone, the direction. You might be right, actually. That might that would be a very interesting way of um, of of doing it. Um, so from the center, from the point of the cone where the cone is, and you know the angle of the cone, and you can take the angle to the uh, to the planet uh, center, and because you know the angle to the planet center, you also know the angle to the planet's uh, edge because you know the radius of the planet, and then you can compare that angle to the cone angle and see if it hits within the cone angle, and I think. That is a very, very clever way of doing it. Let me give full credit here to X-R-I-C-A-R-D-O-2-X. Go watch this stream immediately. It's clearly smarter than I am. Much, much smarter than I am. Um, so much smarter, in fact, that I'm going to actually now try to draw up what he said and not mess it up. So what he was saying is basically, if you find the cone, um, let's say the cone terminates over here, whatever body you have here, you can measure the angle between it and, and the, and you know what the conal angle is, and you know what the angle here is, and you know even with the little um, radius what the angle there is. And so that will tell you whether or not the, the umbra touches the, um, the planet. With a little bit of extra work, I think you can figure out whether uh, the planet is entirely engulfed within the umbra. So um, I'm just fresh, that's all. So yeah, well, you're fresher than I am. Uh, I don't know if you're a fresh man, but I mean you're fresher than I am. Okay, so now I would still like to sort of uh, get get a get a get this uh, understood a little bit. So um, let's see. I think we, I think we can do this. I think we can do this. Fresh in my mind. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. You're also young and whatever. Okay, now let's see if this works because this should give me a red sphere. Now I mean, we kind of we kind of oh, it does not like color does not like color. Um, I guess for brilliant documentation. Um, I'm going to download the PDF documentation in the hope that somehow, for some reason, the PDF documentation actually has some documentation in it. Uh, and I actually want to save this. I don't like using uh, browsers to view. I don't like using browsers to view. Um, it's probably actually, you know what? I'll just leave it the way it is. But we now have a copy if we need it. So graphics 3D. Um. Okay. Oh, RGB color. Okay, and that actually might be a Mathematica thing too. Uh, I might have just biffed it there. So. And the RGB color is, I'm almost sure, um, in 0 to 1 format, not 0 to 255 format, like you might see it elsewhere. And I will go ahead and uh, go crazy. Let's see what this, whoa, it doesn't like that either. General not boxes. Um, so did I actually screw that up? Is that, um, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this, not get rid of it though. Um, 
And let me go back to this. Let me go ahead and pin this tab because we're going to keep using it. Uh, we don't need this tab anymore. We do not need this tab anymore. And we don't need this tab anymore. So that's good. And I think I can pin this. Um, I have not been programming all day. Yeah, well, neither have I. I mean, I have no excuse for not knowing this stuff, except that I'm stupid. Um, let's see. Colors can also be added. Uh, okay. So if this is correct, this should do it. Although I don't like the idea of using named colors, which sounded vaguely racist. Okay. What the hell? So you're literally giving us examples that can't work. Red sphere. Sphere. Now, just to make sure I haven't screwed up things too badly, I'm going to see if it works without that. Okay, good. So it is, it's not that I've messed up the file that badly. All right, let me take a quicker look at this here. Orange polygon zero zero axis to true. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and copy this directly because I, I get the feeling that their own example is not going to work. Uh, which is, which is, you know, usually actually a pretty cool thing in documentation to make sure you're... Okay. And I'm going to comment this out, and this is the Mathematica comment scheme. Presumably work, work with Mathics as well. Let's be real, if you can't solve a problem in program, you keep mentally programming all day and night, I know it, that this is actually true. Um, my brain has been not, has been working constantly on pointless problems since I was born. Okay, well, so even the example they give um, doesn't work. And... Um, the only thing I can think of is they don't, um, yeah, I know, I love it when, I know, I love it when, when their own documentation gives fake examples. Um, so, let's see. Uh, see, and what's interesting is they actually change it. And I wonder if this is the, this is a horrible code. This is not what you want to use. Oh, actually, wow. There's supposed to be an image here. This is an error message. This is in their own manual. They tried to do something, and it, and it says here, I'm going to zoom this in a little bit, a lot, actually, is not a valid box structure. So basically, in their manual, they've printed an, uh, a literal error. I love it. That is fantastic. Um, yeah, so even their attempt to print this little red ball fails. Um, amazing. Amazing. Um, now I know they can do it in two dimensions, because I've, I've that, that, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe they can't. But at least they show that they can do it. So let's see. This is contour plotting. Uh, this is a really nice surface plotting. Um, so there are ways to um, set up lighting. Is that all of it? Is that all of graphics 3D? Polygon line point. And then other stuff they say you can do, you can't really do. Um, and this is actually, uh, this is actually two, two dimensional graphics. Graphics doesn't work. Um, Yeah, that works. That works. That works, but none of these are using any color changes. A cuboid. Um, yeah, and apparently every place they try to use color, like here, they end up with an error message. Whew, fun, fun, fun. Um, so I'm going to see if what I can do with the... Uh, I mean, what I want to do is, I even if we don't, even if we can't use colors, I don't want my boxes to look stupid. Which, by which I mean, let me do this real quick. Uh, by which I mean, I don't want, I don't like the default m lighting model. So if you look at this, the lighting model is, it's apparently, you know, and I don't necessarily object to this, but uh, whoever created Mathematica originally was totally stoned at the time. 
because their color default color model is to have three red, three different lights, one red, one green, one blue, at various points in the three-dimensional spectrum, uh, which just is like a psychedelic effect. It's awesome if you're if you're smoking pot, uh, but I'm not smoking enough right now, so I don't I don't get this. This is a very strange sort of a lighting model. Uh, fortunately, I think you can change lighting. You can definitely change lighting um, in in Mathematica. Whether or not you can do it here. Lighting. So it does is it is this the case that basically every place they say lighting there's an error? It's called lighting model. Okay, so lighting. See, I don't see where the, this highlight is occurring. Is it occurring? Oh, cool! Because of the way they their error me they formatted this document, their error message actually goes off the edge of the page. So somewhere down here, be beyond where you can see the word lighting appears in an error message. Gotta love it. Okay. I don't think lighting model is going to be in here, but lighting model. New. So the way you would normally do this in Mathematica is, <laughs> I know I love it, is you would say something like um, lighting to none. And this will actually just give you complete darkness, which is not useful, but it tests to see whether you can do that. Oh, that's interesting. Nope, doesn't like it. Light is not... A okay, and I think there's a way around this, which... Um, turns out Graphics 3D, there's another something called... I'm going to go ahead and uh, call this T1734. Uh, part of my naming scheme is to give things names uh, that are based on the current timestamp. So they're temporary variables. It's 1734 or about 534 p.m. here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Although... It's uh, past midnight in Greenwich, which is what this machine is set to. Kind of bizarre. Okay, so I think what you can do here is the show command. Well, let's just test it real quick. The show command lets you take graphics and modify them in some way. So you can actually create a graphics object and then show it separately. A except, of course, you cannot because the show command is apparently not implemented. Um, and in Portugal, it is past midnight too. So it's Sunday morning for people in uh, the UK because they're not on summertime. Also Sunday morning in Portugal. And in Australia, it's, yeah, it's, it's still Sunday. But, but you know, they're on, they're on summertime too, so they're way late in Australia. Um, okay, so apparently the show command is not implemented. Always good to know. Uh, okay, show like this. Nope, it is not implemented. Awesome! Uh, and apparently I can't do anything about the, um, I wonder now, can I create a sphere that has a color? Although, because of the lighting model, it's not going to do what we think it's going to do. Sphere XYZ, sphere XYZ R, a collection of spheres of radius R centered at the points. Well, that's useful. Um, and you can actually do this in tech which is nice. Is a collection is okay? Good, good, good. I'm trying to see if there's any place you have like graphics options. Um, yep, and you do. You can put in yellow and break everything. It's wonderful. Um, I, God, I, and I think a, a work has been abandoned on this project, which is one reason it's, it's this bad. I thought it would be good enough to be usable, but it is not, apparently. Um, okay, so I am, I am obsessing over a very minor detail, which is, um, which is how to uh, display these spheres as being not, well, stupid colored. Um, and I'm beginning to think maybe such a thing does not exist. Try using the hexa, yeah, RGB color. The, the problem is, anytime you put any sort of col color directive in here, it just doesn't seem to think... See, the, the, the area you get back here is really interesting. It basically, it basically says, I have no idea what I'm doing. No, that's a different error. Okay, come on, why isn't it doing anything? What the hell? Wow.
Well, if it wanted to behave, what have I done here? Now let me see if I can get back to where I was. Oh, because I'm only really defining it, I'm not actually showing it. So this is where I would have to say T1734 to actually show it. Because I, I can define it, which is actually nice. You don't necessarily want it good. And now if you use RGB color. But what it's complaining about is that one of the things you've sent it is not a box. And that's, that's, the, that's the error that we're getting here. Um, is not a valid box structure. So apparently adding that color directive breaks uh, breaks the um, it, it b b breaks the ability of um, breaks the ability for this. Now another possibility here is to wrap this inside a two dimensional <laughs> graphics object and then see if it'll if it'll this is a hack, but let's see if it works. No, it doesn't like graphics 2D either as a um, as a, as a hack. So what we could try doing here is show graphics red, which might just be red. This this won't work, but if I put it in this, it still probably won't work, uh, but it might. Oh wow! I broke everything there. No types for none type and int. Okay, so very very bad of me. Let's see if this does any better. I mean, it's quite possible that I actually broke it uh, so badly that it's not gonna. I can't fix it. But let's take a look. Uh, get to level programming. Hmm? You mean like level up in programming? I'm not. I'm not sure what you mean. I don't think Mathematica has a um, a one-line comment uh, protocol. All right. Let's see if I've broken it totally because I have done this before, where you make an error so bad that you break. No, okay, good. We're still fine. Okay, Mr. Spherical Balls. You make me unhappy. Oh, ghetto level programming. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, when you're trying to fix what the, the programmers got wrong. So let me, let me see if I can, you know, because I mean, if it's broken, let's see if it's really, really broken. Let's just look at some two-dimensional graphics. Um, I don't think this will actually help. And because I'm not putting a semicolon here, it should show this. It shouldn't just suppress the showing. That's not bad. Okay, that's that's pretty cool actually. Except why do these circles intersect? Um okay, okay, cool. Now can I show the axes instead sort of just showing these things sort of hanging out in space? Nope. That was was worth a shot. Um Graphics. Normally, you would do something like show T seventeen forty. Actually, you can just do like seventeen forty axes to true, or show axes to true. Well, let's see what this does. Yep, just beautiful that it's totally worthless. Trying to get over the debt. I know this is a, this this is an open source thing. Mathics is open source. Mathematica, which is what I normally use, is not open source, but it works a hell of a lot better. This is supposed to be an attempt to do a basic clone of Mathematica. Unfortunately, I think it's too basic. I think the um, uh, I think they might have gone too far in the basics department. Let's solve this. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we're going to solve it. We're going to at some point just have to give up on the show axes. Um, axes to Okay, so here it is, affix axes to true, plot range, well, this didn't even error for them, so maybe I can get this to work. And let's go ahead and do this. And so maybe the show command, does, they don't need the show command, which is what normally we do that. So let's see. Dun, 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 dun. 
Wow. Wow. Okay, so now I'm going to see if I can get their own example going. Um, comment this out quickly. For some reason, I'm getting multiple typing errors, but I don't think that's. Um, I think that's the VM, and I could probably. I don't know. Probably do something to fix it. I'm not too worried about that one. Let's be the devs. I don't really necessarily want to work on this project because I don't necessarily like it. So this is their own code in their manual. Uh, if this works. Oh, actually, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I didn't do this right. Um, yeah. Because it's not, see, the graphics object is this sucker here, and the axis is actually an option, which, which is actually correct. I mean, that, that's how it should be. The graphics are the two circles. Oh, except red and blue is not going to work, is it? Um, so that's probably what's breaking it. Anyway. Whoa! Alright, we found red and blue worked. Okay, awesome! So now we can get two-dimensional graphics, um, which we can't move around at all. In This this might still have some value, actually. Um, because we can... Um, in fact, we might actually be able to do this... We could do the demonstration for this um, in 2D. And then... Oh, no, I don't know if I want to do that because it's still really more complicated than that. So, cool. And now, now the sort of question comes, what happens if we try to make this into a 3D, gra uh, 2D graphics embedded into 3D graphics? It probably won't work, but let's see what happens. Yeah, it doesn't like it. Okay. So, so we're going to go ahead and make this one not show up. So this will work, but if you add a red to it, it won't. And that is really bad, because it, it apparently worked at some point. Do I have it suppressed? Do I have it suppressed? I do. I need to unsuppress this one. Okay. Come on. Another time it should have come. Something should have happened. Okay, what's going on? Oh, again, I think maybe I need to actually print out T1734. I don't think I can do it quite that way. The question is, who do you box a color? Or how do you box a color? Yeah. Well, you get into the ring with it, and you fight, fight, fight. Okay, what's wrong with you now? Why are you unhappy? Oh, because I think the final thing is suppressed, and that maybe it evaluates the whole thing as one big chunk. So... Yay! And now, all I have to do is put red, which we know works, because it works somewhere else. Um, and... Anti-yay! Okay, that's not cool. Um, okay. So, at this point, I think I'm going to accept this. Um, and I'm just going to do it with the stupid colored spheres. Try the box of color. It, it, I mean, it, it tells you what it's trying to do here. Style box. Hmm. I mean, some of the stuff must make sense to it somehow. Red, but with the... You mean... I'm pretty sure that's not what they want. Is that what you mean? In the red sphere, like this? Uh, I'm confused. Okay, you're gonna have to just sort of show me. Too bad you can't cut and paste because this is a this is a screencast, not a. Um, you can't cut and paste this, and I'm not on REPL or anything, so you can't really do that. Put it all in. Okay. You mean like inside this... F oh. Something like that? That actually might work in Mathematica. But it won't work here. Do red, comma, sphere, red... Oh. 
but the the spheres are in their own little brackets. So I mean, you mean like red comet like that? That's what we were doing before. That doesn't help. Or do you mean like this? And boy, that that's not even valid. I don't pretty sure that's gonna. Yeah, it doesn't like the way it doesn't let me do that. Um. Yeah, because I, 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 this this is very it's supposed to be close to Mathematica, so very bad 3D graphics. Uh, let's see. Use the curved ones, then. Okay. Um, Mathematica uses the curved parentheses to mean um, multiplication. So if that's what you mean, let's see. This won't work. I'm pretty sure it's not even it's not even uh, syntactically correct in Mathematica to do, to do that. Uh, I'm going to live with this. I don't. I think maybe they don't know how to do it, or um, yeah, I don't. I mean, this seems to be very limited. And let's see if they have a light. Um, so they have a bunch of colors that you cannot use in 3D. Apparently, you can use them in lab color. This is good stuff, actually. Um, light source. See the lighting source in 3D. Yeah, the lighting source in 3D. Oh, hang on. What the hell is this? Ooh. You can see graphics in tech form. It's probably not helpful at all, but but you can. That might be the way to do it. Light, light red. A free light weight alternative. Okay, well, uh, this one, we've got a sort of a final idea coming in here. Let's put it in tech form. Uh, and I think there's a way to do it with SVG, so I might look into that too real quick. Okay, shiny. So how is this helpful? Well, there's a site called Tech Paste. Now, obviously, this is not going to be the kind of thing we can use regularly. This is just sort of a curiosity at this point. Um, we can take this, Control C, Control V, and I think you have to put it within little dollar signs, otherwise it won't recognize it. Ah. Yeah, we can't, apparently whatever they're doing is, is weird. Okay, now there is one thing that does work, which I probably should have mentioned earlier. Um, see, the really nice thing with doing it, th with doing it sort of their way, is you can mess with the three. Okay, it's not what I meant to do. You can actually mess with the three D, which is really nice, and it's something that I kind of a feature that I wanted to keep. But I think if I'm willing to get rid of this, um, I can actually uh, export this to uh, to a. I can export it to an image. They wouldn't let me to do that. They don't like that. Uh, but I can export this to an SVG file. And if this works, and I, I and it is running inside of a web browser, so it might not work. Wow, shiny. Um, oh, T1734, I meant. Yeah, okay, that that was my bad. Okay, so now presumably it's created a file called temp SVG, and actually I know that it has. Uh, so let's take a look at that real quick. SVG. I'm sorry, foo.svg. There it is, and it was created just now, so it is correct. Unfortunately, I don't know if. Uh, image magic will not display it. I know that. I know that uh, XV won't display it. Um, pretty sure that Fay won't display it, but I don't have Fay installed here, so I do have Fay installed here. Oh, because I have it as an alias, it happens to show up, but it's not really there. Yeah, because I have it aliased. Um, 
yeah, uh, it'll it'll show up. But let's see. So, well, now, Mr. Smarty Pants Programmer, um, there are SVG viewers, and I'm going to look and find one that I know about. Uh, uh, if you have any great SVG viewers, let me know. I'm also going to do a yum search here to see if there's any that I don't know about, that I should know about. And I really need to make this so I can do that without having to type in a password. But let's take a look. Oh! Maybe I'll type in the wrong password now. Okay. Um, Batik. Batik might actually be worth installing. Let me see if I have Batik installed. Well, let me actually see. Um, I'm on my machine. You can't see what I'm doing. It's totally intentional. Oh, uh, ins Inkscape and Ink View presumably will do this for me. Fail to load the awesome. That is just brilliant. Oh, okay. So, but it's still going to come up, of course. I probably need to quit out of this. Let me make sure that that file actually exists, even though I just saw it exist. Oh, and there is also an SVG to PAM. Um, yeah, SVG to PAM, which uh, you does not, in fact, convert um, SVG images. Um, so this actually says this is not an SVG, which is good, because when you import to SVG, you don't really want SVGs. You want something that's not quite an SVG. Let's see what type of... F this file is probably not... Yeah, it's just a regular sort of XML file that doesn't really do anything. Okay, so pretty, pretty bad stuff going on here. Can't can't see it in tech. La tech. Um, I just use Windows, my man. Okay. I have no more idea. Okay, okay. Well, let's see. So this actually does not is not even a um, SVG, and the only thing I'm thinking here is maybe wow. So Emacs is trying to oh, Emacs is not happy. All right, let's do this. Control C, Control C. Okay. So maybe we just need to make this, we need to wrap it inside of an SVG. And if that's the case, I'm not too unhappy. Um, yeah, and so no. And I think now file will tell me that it's an SVG. No, it doesn't like that. What, is, what does an SVG look like? Uh, this is very, very ghetto. We're going to try to see what an SVG looks like. Um, so we're going to use... Because I think you need more than just the open SVG tag. I think you need this whole crap here to make this an SVG. And then... Da -da 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 -da. This is just something I created, so it actually works. And then a slash SVG at the end. And now let's see if it's a still on an SVG file. doesn't like it. Although I'm, I'm getting the sense that maybe we could set a width and stuff to for it. Um, um, Inkscape, and by the way, there's another program that does it too, and that is uh, Ink View, which I think is the same program, actually, except I don't have it. Let's see what this does. Unknown graphics type SVG through graphics 3D. So yeah, not 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 really that helpful. Okay, now in theory we could look at this, and then we could close our eyes and pretend we didn't look at it. Okay. Um, let me see if because when I create an SVG, the other thing you have to do is you have to give a you have to say how big you want the image to be if you're going to print it somewhere other than just nowhere. So let's do that. Um, now, I don't, this is not going to work. I'm just wasting my time. 
That's good, but I'm wasting your time, which is probably bad for you. Get attribute with failed. So it's going to be actually, I think, so we've done this a little bit. So we're going to say width equals 800 height, just for testing. We're going to make a really small one equals 600. XML text reader get attribute width failed. Okay, I give up. I'm not going to try to fix their broken SVG anymore. Um, one nice thing is you actually can type in here export formats. And they will tell you the list of uh, things that they probably won't actually save to. So let me try TIFF, and it's probably going to give me a different kind of complaint. The complaint here will be something like, cannot, this is not an image file or something. Cannot infer format of file foo.tiff. Okay, that, that might be, it's, I might just need one there, but I don't think it's going to actually do it. Uh, you need to know when to leave it. Yeah, well, you're right. I'm not there yet. See, only an image can be exported to an image file. So now, you might think you can take... Uh, this and create an image out of it, but you cannot. This is going to crash with a horrible, horrible long error. Yeah. Because whatever the magic is that lets you print images um, doesn't work. In 3D, it does work in 2D. Um, so clearly someone just sort of did like half of this and then decided they didn't want to really do it anymore. Um, Let's see. I don't even know why I'm bothering to do this because I'm going to try PP. Well, you know what? Let's go freaking crazy. I'm going to do it in some of these formats to see which one of these is... Um, so which one of these is um, considered an image? And SVG is apparently not considered an image, so you can get away with that. Uh, PPM, which is a portable network file of some sort. Um, no, does not like that. Um, bitmap is an image format, though actually you can do more with it. Let's see if that helps. Yeah, it doesn't like me. I'm just tempted to see what the hell this is going to be as a CSV. It may just not even do it, but that, that just kind of wigs me out. Oh, cool! I can somehow import this as, uh, export this as a CSV. Yeah, that's not really helpful. JPEG. Yeah, and JPEG, again, ha actually has more... You can put more in it than just an image, but I'm sure... Ooh. That's interesting. Go all in on GoJPEG! Go! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Let's see what this does. Nope, only an image can be exported to an image file. Um, PBM, portable bitmap. PCX is the last one I'm going to try. Because I'm pretty sure this isn't going to work. Yeah, that's the issue. Um, yeah, it doesn't like me. Best CSV file ever. Absolutely. Just one element, one row, one column. Okay, screw it. Um, okay, so we're now going to sort of live with the lighting model. Uh, one sort of nice thing with this is presumably Mathematica is bigger than Mathix, so if I... I can use this file in Mathematica and improve it later if I have to. But for right now, uh, let's see if we can actually solve our... go back to solving our problem. Um, so let's see. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. And actually, I should probably get as much of the um, Mathematica code as I had in here. And let's see if we can just... Um, uh, let's see, what are we trying to do here? Um, okay, there's, there's a really ugly way to do this um, that basically involves looking at each 3D pixel and deciding what you want to put there. Um, 
And the more I think about it, that that's not going to work here because, oh, yeah, there's something called a raster you can do in Mathematica that I'm guessing you can't do here because it's really useful. Um, wow, raster appears nowhere inside of here, and raster just lets you basically pick off the points one at a time. Um, pixel. Oh, binarize. That it. That would be. That would be actually fairly useful. Why do I feel that that's not going to really work? Well, partly because it's not a black and white image, and partly because... Uh, interesting. Um, I don't think this is going to work. I think it's going to be a different error message. Oh, cool. So it doesn't even recognize binary, <laughs> even though it is one of its uh, presumable formats. Okay. If you could print the image in a bitmap, it's great to get all the points. I'm not sure what I, f I mean. What I, I mean, obviously, what I could do here is I could do a screen capture. In fact, since this is being videotaped, uh, videotaped. Now, now you know how old I am. Um, this would be this. I could do a screen capture here, um, but that's not what I'm looking to do right now. So let's see if I can. Uh, Let's see if I can do what we're trying to do here. And I'm going to see if I had this... Oh, good, I had this up already. So, we have all this crap here. Um, so, the angle radian is going to be... Okay, so this is the point where the umbras meet. And I'm pretty sure Graphics 3D did not have a cone as one of its uh, objects. Uh, in fact, I don't think it had anything as one of them. Well, it had very little, if I remember correctly, uh, things you could draw. And I'm pretty sure a cone was not one of them. Um, primitives. And the primitives it allowed for were cuboid, uh, 3D box, line 3D box, point 3D box, polygon, sphere, sphere 3D. So none of these are actually cones. Um, although you can approximate a cone with a, with a polygon, a 3D polygon. Um, but let me see if I can... Uh, I, think, I think we might be able to pull this off. Um, not that I know who to how to use it, but can you do this in MATLAB? And 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 the answer is actually I've looked at other mathematics program, mathema free math manipulation programs. MATLAB probably I've looked at what, what they call these are called symbolic manipulators. Um, and I know there's a free version of MATLAB, and I think Maple is now free as well. And as I say that, I'm not sure why I'm not using them. Um, and I know MATLAB is very well documented, and Maple. And I think I wanted to stick with uh, Mathematica because that's what I know, and I thought the conversion would be easy because I could use existing Mathematica code in Mathix. Clearly, that is a freaking lie. So let's go over here now and look for free MATLAB. And I'm pretty sure that this exists. So free trial. St free student version. New Octave. I always... I always tr trust GNU, or sorry, GNU, you actually have to pronounce it. Um, yeah, so this, the problem here is going to be I don't really know any of the syntax for Mathematica, um, for MATLAB, rather. Uh, Maple I was actually the first symbolic manipulator. You have a trial for students, and you can use GNU Octave, which is actually, um, you know, very, very similar to MATLAB. The problem is I just don't know MATLAB, and I don't want to, um, I don't necessarily want to learn it. I mean, I'm trying to leverage what I already know. And now Maple, 
I have used maple before. Um, uh, let's see, we're going to download for free, and there, there are ways to do this. Um, and Sage Math. Now, I've been to say it's sagenb.org is where the thing is, and I've done I've been here. So everyone here is actually getting the this is actually going to be fairly useful to someone, and that's not what I meant to do. Let's try it one more time. Let's say test online, but it's actually free. Whoa, that's not exactly what I wanted at all. Although, I might be getting Alzheimer's, so that's it's always a nice thing to know. And I think I was here earlier, I don't know if it was on the stream or not on the stream, but um, but I was here earlier. And this is the free version right here, totally cool. And totally, it, it, I'm sure it's awesome, I mean, um, it has like a graphics, I don't, but the thing is I don't really know what, to hel what the hell to put it, what I can put in here. Um, Give me a point centered at 2-2, two, two, maybe. Yeah, and it, it that's not what it wants. I mean, th this is my fault, because I don't know uh, Sage uh, well enough to uh, to use it. And am I going to... The problem is Mathematica is really powerful, so even some of these things will not necessarily uh, be as powerful as Mathematica. So I might just end up learning something new that isn't really, uh, really isn't helping uh, me at all. Sugar-free maple syrup. Really? Um, okay. And I don't think I did this on stream, so I will go ahead and do this. Um, maple player. Maple. Okay. Free symbolic manipulator online, or I could say just Linux here, but it's not going to you're going to get the same thing that you got before, and I've, I've actually seen this one before. Um, Wolfram Alpha, high calc I've heard a lot about. Um, let's see. High calc, and there's Sage, everyone loves Sage, it's different though. Mathix is the one that we're using now, and apparently if you use it for the right things, it works. Um, but if you don't use it for the right things, it is stupid. Um, SimPy, which is, there's quick math, if you, blah, blah, blah. There's act actually also a really nice, um, I hope I get this right, this isn't a porn site or something. No, it is. Okay, good. Um, this is actually really nice. This is, um, oh, there's a 3D version of this. Hang on. Yeah. Uh, and this is actually really nice, because it, in terms of actually looking at stuff, this is gorgeous. This actually does things that, uh, there we go. Let's fuck with this sucker. Um, yeah, we're done. We don't want and this is really nice. We can go to this. And I was I was playing with this earlier today. This is actually pretty nice. So you can say like um, x squared. And there's there's a way to do this where you ah. I meant to do it all. Unfortunately, one of the bad things about this is it uh, y squared. Now, unfortunately, it tries to do it while I'm doing it. That's not a bad looking function, but uh, not what I want. Um, um, I had this working better. There we go. This doesn't like this. Hang on. I actually have this running somewhere else, I think, on my other machine. So I'm going to take a quick look at this. Uh, is this my job or am I doing it for some other reason? No, no. I've been retired for a long time now. Uh, I do this, um, and I think it actually says on my Twitch page, the, the main goal is because I want to get better at programming. I don't know why. I mean, I've been programming since the dawn of freaking time. Um, but I just like doing stuff like this. It keeps me amused. Um, 
And, uh, you know, basically I'm just counting down time until death. I don't like saying that because some people think it's sad, but it's not really when you're my age. And this, uh, this helps pass the time. So that's nice. Um, now there's a way to do this. There's a way to ed edit... Hang on one second. I think I have it still running on my other machine. By which I mean I do not have it running on my other machine. I do not. There's a way to do this where you can actually have it... Um, Oh, you know what? I think in this case you don't need to say um, Yeah. And this is not what I expected. Um Oh, I do mean z squared here. And there you go, it's a cone. It's beautiful. Um, hey, where'd it go? Come back here. Yes. Show yourself. Oh, hang on. Okay. And one of the nice things you can do is you can actually get its freaking color. Um, let's go black. One of the bad things is, of course, it doesn't always work right. Um, but it works better, well, apparently not today, it's not. Um, I'm going to duplicate this, and see, that's, that's the weird thing, is I duplicate it and the duplicate works fine. So I can delete the original, have this, Beautiful. And now I can put a sphere here that is um, x minus 1 squared plus... That's the other bad thing is you kind of, when you're in su subscript mode, it's sort of a pain to get out of subscript mode. Um, you have to hit like the end key or something. y minus 1 squared, and I don't like that it does this either, plus z minus 1 squared equal equal 1 equals one. I don't need to do a double equal. And there you have it. A cone and a sphere. Intersecting. And it's really kind of hard to tell from here. It's There's actually colors. It's, yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Um, and this doesn't look great, but I'm going to change the color here. And this I've done before, so I know it works. Uh, let's make this a nice, lovely sort of a purple color. Um, and see, there you go. It's, and you can actually look and you can see what the um, you can see what the area of intersection is there. That's that sucker right there. Um, so in this case, we would have an eclipse on the planet because uh, because it is a portion of the umbra does hit the uh, does hit the planet. Um, oh, and this is actually a good example here because you'll notice that the um, it's kind of hard to see here, but zoom, zoom, zoom in. The, the point of the umbra does not hit the planet, but that doesn't mean the umbra itself doesn't hit the planet in one place. And there's actually a more complicated example um, that I was looking at earlier where you can actually have it hit the planet in two separate places, but not in the middle, of, not between those two places. Um, a partial, uh, yes. This would be, if you're standing at this, no, actually if you're standing in this point uh, of the planet, anywhere within this zone, you will see a total eclipse, because the umbra is where you see a total eclipse. However, if you're starting in this part of the planet, you will see a partial eclipse. Um, so that's how these, these things work. So it's a total eclipse for part of the planet, partial eclipse for part of the planet. And um, again, the, the, the sort of bad thing here is, of course, we don't have... Um, we, this is really not really showing what's, what's creating this, this, um, this umbra. Um, and the other bad thing is this just because of the way they're doing the rear. This is a very, this is like a 45 degree angle, which is really, really large. So I want to say, I'm going to say z squared over 5. See what that does. Yeah, that looks, I mean, the first one was still a cone. This looks more like we sort of want a cone to be a little bit thinner, a little bit skinnier. 
And here we can see the, yeah, here we can see the intersection is like this weird thing here, but this part, sorry, no, this is the intersection right there. Um, and, and this is, uh, so this is, you know, this is actually really a much nicer graphing tool than Mathix. Um, I don't think we can define parametric equations here. But now I just want to try. Yeah, see, I don't think it understands how to... Um, I don't think it understands the concept of, well, let's see. That's a lot of, got a lot of cool stuff here. Um, let's see if we can have the word parabetric in here somewhere. Para, met, eater, parabetric derivative, that's a good thing. Parametric equation, uh, parametric plotting. Um, and I forget that whether I got parametric plotting to work here. I don't think I did. I don't think parametric plotting is supported. Um, but let's see. Um, and a parametric plot is, well, I mean, it is what it is. Um, and this would be in 2D, by the way. T, T plus 1, T goes from 0 to 5. If this works, we'll see like a little wiggly line. Well, it won't be wiggly, it'll probably be straight, actually. Um, hey, 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 So it does do this, and now I'm going to just make a very minor change that's going to break everything. Can we parametric plot in 3D? And I'm guessing the answer to that is no. If this works, I will be very happy. Interesting. Um, it doesn't even recognize parametric plot 3D as a, as a command. Now let me see if I can do this with three. I don't think this is going to work, but if it does, it'd be kind of cool. Yeah, it just gave me a blank sort of thing. Um, so let's see if what parametric plot does here. It's great that we have that parametric plot. Awesome. Um, yeah, this is a two-dimensional. Let me bring this bigger. I keep forgetting that I'm, I'm trying to help people, kind of. Um, well, that didn't really work. Because this stupid thing is here. Can I actually... Oh, no, I've made it worse. I want to get rid of this. How do I get rid of you? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, here we go. You... Okay, apparently there's... Oh, I think I can X you out there. There we go. Uh, parametric plot. Uh, again, there's all, only two things you can do here. Uh, and it does not look like parametric plot will... Well, we'll keep looking, but I don't think it supports it. It doesn't have parametric plot 3D, which Mathematica does have. So once again, really started to think I should be doing this in 2D. And I'm actually wondering if we can get away with that because... Let's see. Okay, I guess the other thing I didn't think about is... Um, no, there will always be a point in the universe from where it will appear that one is exactly covering the other. Um, so, let's actually go ahead and try doing this in 2D, because I think your idea about the angle uh, is going to be correct. In other words, the... Uh, all oh, right, we can't do that because the formulas still have to be in 3D. So that's why we're stuck with it. And I don't necessarily want to do graphics in one dimension and um, non-graphics in another dimension. Okay. Um, so I think at one point we had this working as line box. Th See, this is where it would be really good if I kept either a git backup uh, or... All right, here we go. This is not how you're supposed to do things, but if I looked at my kill ring, it will have 
um, it will have my line box or whatever it was before. Ooh, or maybe it won't. Maybe it's gone off the edge. Ah, okay, not good. Um, okay, and by the way, if I get this working again with the line, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, line box. And I think it was 3D line box. I know, I, but graphics, 3D. Although technically, I guess I could rewind this and just see what the hell I did there. Um, oh. Why does this seem to me like it's not going to work? Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I think I think this might be okay. So the, the problem is it's got to be line, and then they both have to be inside of a... Um, They both have to be inside a, it's a double brace and not a single brace. So, come on, rock and roll. Wait, there we go. Yeah, and probably would be good if I, um... I need to clean this up a lot. But, um... So this is, this is the only thing in the file that's not commented out. This should do what I want. And there we go. Very nice. So it is now taking us, by the way, this stream has been going, if you not that you've been watching all of it, not that you should be, for two hours. And we are now close to back to where we started. We have one little bonus going for us here. And I'm going to go ahead and save this uh, in a place you can't see. Um, and this is just going to go to Git, so if you need it from GitHub, you can get it there. Uh, So, oh wow, G this is the first time Git's given me this warning. It took 3.37 seconds to enumerate untracked files. Status minus UNO, which probably is U-N-O, may speed it up, but you have to be careful not to forget to add new files yourself. Yeah, and that's, I think that's because I'm running like a bajillion heavy processes, including not only um, a VM, but a Mathix inside of a VM. And I was prepared to run a... Um, all right, thank you very much. You have a great rest of the day, too. That is to the person who in chat. Um, not only that, but the, um, the, uh, I'm, I was thinking about running Docker inside the VM, which means I'd be running a virtual machine inside a virtual machine, uh, which is fairly poorly crap. Looks like about like uh, four people in chat here, so hello to all of you. Uh, feel free to make comments, uh, suggest something. I don't really care. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to um, sort of generalize this a little bit. And we are going to be looking at our, um, not this, we'll be looking at our Eclipse program to do this. So we will sort of say, um, so let's see what we're going to do here. We're going to say, uh, and I'm trying to see how, how bad I want to make this. Uh, I'm going to try to create something that's going to show sort of a um, show else that shows uh, two spheres in arbitrary position, and and then the line con con uh, containing them, not containing them, uh, the line connecting them, and I'm pretty sure this has to be a because I can't really assign it in real time. So graphics 3D, and then. First sphere, with SR, and then the second sphere with... I'm going to go ahead and put a little break in, in the chat so I know where I am, but... Um, so I so if anyone else says anything, I'll see it. Rx... R. Now, if this doesn't work, I'll be really worried, because that means that it doesn't know how to do... Um, it doesn't know how to do a hold definition, which is sort of critical to Mathematica. And TR. And for right now, that's going to be it. And let's go ahead and get rid of this. 
And so if this doesn't work, I'm probably going to give up on math ticks because this is, this is actually um, the fact that you can uh, you can't instantiate this right away because you can't create graphics 3D with things that don't have values. Um, so you should though be able to do this. Um, you should be able to do like a delayed a delayed. Um, yay! There we go. Looks ugly as hell. Ooh, it looks good. I don't know if I can get in trouble for this. Booby! It's a booby! It's a nipple! Okay, get off of that. Okay, cool. So the next thing we want to do is we want to, um, uh, let's see, and we want the line between the two of them, which is actually not hard either. Although we might want to do a little bit more with the line here in just a minute, so. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Uh, no, there we go. And I'm going to change these because I don't like th they're not really how we want. We're not going to be doing this with. Um, where's my show else? Did I delete my show else? Yes, I did. Uh, so let's do it from zero zero zero. Radius of 1, 1, 2, 3 with a radius of 0 0.2, let's say. Uh, and there we go. And there's a line connecting them. So now we need to find the line, um, the point where, if we were to do this sort of thing, they would actually intersect. And fortunately, we do know that. And we actually have that computed. In Mathematica, but we're going to use it here. And we probably could have computed it uh, computed here in, um, in Mathics if we'd wanted to. So this is the point of intersection. Um, um, it's not the cone of, what is it, the cone point, the cone, point cone, cone of focus, we'll have the cone point. And again, it's dependent on the cone variables, obviously. In this case, we can use a simple equals because it doesn't. We don't need to. Uh, we don't need. To, we we can. We don't need to instantiate the right side right away. We don't have to assign values to it right away. So here, what we can do now is um, take the line from the first object and go all the way. Let's see. That is to the cone point. And just to be safe, I'm going to do it as a separate directive. Uh, but although it's gonna it's gonna overlap the first one, so and here we're just gonna say cone point S X S Y S C S R T X T Y T Z T R. Um and let's see what that does. That does not appear to be going all the way Although this might be that the the extra the extra cone value is not actually it is it looks like this is uh, like this let's make the the smaller one the smaller sphere bigger so the cone the cone extends out a little bit further so let's do that right now okay now we're definitely not it's not definitely not working so let's take a look to see what's wrong here um, so let's ask yes. yeah. So let's go ahead and, ooh, didn't mean to do that. So let's go ahead and see what the cone point value is here and why we're not getting a line to it. And it might be that we need to get rid of this little export format here. I'm going to just comment that out. I don't know why that's still running. It's inside of a it's inside of a comment, but maybe that'll help. Um, interesting. So this 
Apparently, you cannot put export formats within a um, comment, either that I've got nested comments going on here. Which I don't think I do. So, this is in comment. This is inside of a second comment. This is inside of a third comment. This is inside of a fourth comment. This is inside of a fifth comment. Okay, well... Maybe we somehow forced it to print, but maybe we can't comment that out. Okay. That's pretty freaking cool, because they didn't... Oh, that's actually a separate cell, never mind. Okay, that didn't help at all. So, what can we do here? Show else... Oh, because... Yeah, I'm going to start printing some of this stuff. So, let's do this. Point six 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 seven one three three, and that's not what I meant to do, so let's... I do want to still show elements, and then I want to print this. Nope. Okay, what am I doing here? If I put a semicolon here, will that help? Or do I actually need to do this in a separate cell? Okay, I'm hoping that print will print even when it's not the last thing in the in the uh, in the file. And if it won't, then it means I've got to do something else to be more clever here. There we go. So according to this, and I guess we should do some uh, axes go to true here, because I have no idea what we're looking at. I mean, I do, because I know what it is, but let's go ahead and see if we can add that to our lovely show element. Got to be careful here. Show else equals graphics this axes to true. It has to be outside of the graphics 3D. Yay! So according to this, I don't know which one of these is the x-axis, um, which is sad. Um, so 0.67, 1.33, and 2. So I think no matter how you look at it, that is not uh, that is not where this is going. Um, so all right, let's let's see what's going on here. Um, so where is the cone point of this going to be? Well, um, it's actually going to be a 2, 4, 6, just because of the way I've chosen... Oh, yeah, it's going to be a 2, 4, 6, because this one's half the size of the other one, so don't know what's going on there. Um, let's go ahead and create the parametric line between them. Um... Okay, and here's where I was being sort of sloppy with the variables, because um, oh yeah, so it would be nice if I could just use if I could just use um, s x s y s z without having to uh, without having to put them inside of a function, because it gets really ugly to say stuff like this code point blah 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 blah. Um, so, okay, this is bad practice, but it's easier, so I'm going to do it. Um, so this should have the same effect, um, and I'm pretty sure that Mathematica does this. There's a special name for it in um, some languages uh, where you can assign multiple variables from a... Um, from a list. Um, so there's this, line of t equals this, show else, sphere, sphere. I don't think there's anything better you can do with, oh, actually show else is now going to become this, and then just show else. And cone point is just going to be cone point. So hideous, we can fix it later much easier to deal with though unless I've broken it and I have it awesome and for some reason it is showing me oh yeah yeah because cone points is now not a function anymore we just need to print cone point okay so let's see what we can do here so let's say um, and by the way I might be able to put some of this into mathics on the on the command line because the only thing we're using um, 
uh, the, um, the the visual interface for is the show else, which is actually just for our benefit. It's not actually uh, doing anything for us that much. So let's see. Let's go ahead and try that. Let's go back to the um, to the X term here, and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Um, and I think if you do this, okay, so this should have actually loaded in. So line of zero should be, there we go, line of one should be this, and now the cone point should not be what it is. Yeah, I don't see why that's happening. The cone point is going to extend beyond the. Um, it's going to extend beyond the cone, not not not. And I think I know it's wrong actually. So let's go back over here. Um, the two the two points, and we're, we're going to need to do this. The two values of t, where uh, the angle between the two uh, between the two vectors that as displayed from t would be the same. Are there's two of them, and I think I just got the wrong one. So, and and there's a symmetry here that you can, well, I can't exploit apparently, um, but one in theory could exploit. So let's uh, do this again. So t1, t2. And I'm pretty sure that t2 is two is the one we actually want, and there's a there's one of them is um, one of them is actually like the penumbral point or something. It, there's it's something weird. So line of T1, incorrect. Line of T2, correct. So I think we're going to just say um, so I think first of all we should define line up here before we start using it. So the cone point is going to just be line of T2. And I think that should um, that should do it. And that's really what we're looking for there. And that's the kind of thing we were we were going for. I wish I could get this to do a little bit more of what I wanted to, but maybe maybe not. Okay. Um, so this is this is uh, this is where if you were over here, you would see these both as being the same angular size. Um, so now what we want to do here is we want to draw it from this point to this point. Got to be careful here. So the cone is going to be basically this line and this line. Um, but the problem is I'm not quite sure how to draw that. Let's see. Um, and what um, our friend suggested here is we can actually determine the angle here. And um, and then maybe we're not going to be able to draw anything with it, but we can determine the angle. And the angle is actually also something I've computed before. Um, oh, and the angle you can actually get just by using um, angrad1, which is our... Th these, these are going to be the same, obviously, but... Okay, our first transform moves the umbral point to the... So we're not going to do that transform here. We're just going to look now at the angle uh, that is formed from here to here, going through here, from here, through here, going through here. And the idea is if we have something here, uh, a, a third sphere here, we can determine uh, whether or not the... Um, we can look at the angle between uh, this point and this and determine whether the even with the radius it's close enough to this angle. Uh, let's go ahead and do a little bit of that. So the angle here is going to be um, it's actually really easy to compute. It's um, let's see. So we know this is line of one. Um, we know the XYZ coordinates. So it's going to be blah, blah, blah. we know this is R I think it's T1 T R or whatever. It's t this is the second one, right? Yeah, TR is the smaller one. Um, this is going to be TR, and this is going to be the distance between 
the point where they meet and the center of this guy, which we also know. Um, so the that's going to be opposite over... No, it's going to be the arc tan. I don't know who the hell said it was going to be the arc sine. The arc sine would be the hypotenuse. Um, so this angle here is going to be... Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, this is the opposite and this is the adjacent. So, okay. Opposite. And the opposite we know is just going to be TR. And the adjacent is going to be the length of... Okay, let's see. So line T, you know where the cone point is. So actually, let's, let's, let's go over here real quick. Cone point. So we know where line of T is. Um, line of T2, rather. That's, sorry, the cone, sorry. Line of one is where the second object is. Cone point is where the first object is. So we, what we want is that the, the length of that vector, the norm of that vector. Okay, and then we want that over whatever SR, uh, TR is, and we want the arc tangent of that. And because I'm... 68 degrees seems a little bit high, doesn't it? Um, so let's see. Just between the cone point in here, TR. Um, TR over... Okay, that, that seems like a really... I don't know. Um, maybe we're having, like, scale issues. That seems like a really big angle to me. But okay. I mean, that's that. I guess that's what it is. Um... And that's going to be, and th we can check this because it's also going to apply to, to um, in fact, let's do this. So the angle one, we're going to use um, the forward object, that is the T object. Um, so it's going to be TR over, I think we just did this. Uh, so TR minus cone point. No, TR over. Oh, this is wrong. Sorry, this is, I did the wrong thing here. Um, I needed to do, so from from over here, norm, this is the length of the uh, adjacent side. The opposite side is S of R. Or T of R, I keep saying that. And so it's the arc tangent of this. And then to convert that from radians to degrees, 21 degrees seems more natural. Now here's a clever bit. We could also just use the difference between line zero and cone point, and we should get the same freaking answer. There we go. Um, because we're just taking the, now we're going from here to here using this SR as our opposite side and using this length as our adjacent side. So that is the angle of the cone, as it were. Let's see. Um, so we get it two ways. We get a TR uh, over the norm of, and actually I could just say TX, TY, TZ, uh, which is line one, but I mean, you know, whatever. Uh, minus the cone point. Uh, angle 2 equals SR over this. But now, God willing, these two angles will be the same. Ooh. Yep, they are the same. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and make a quick save of this because it's working. Okay, so now um, if we're not going to show the elements, let's see if we can get these, um, let's see if we can get these, do we care? What's the name of my third sphere? Did I said call it, I couldn't have called it R because it's a dumb name for a third sphere. Um, third sphere is Q below. Okay, well that sounds reasonable to me. And let's make it really, really tiny. And I was about to say let's, um,
And now that I think about it, we could actually have made these things into variables like q equals qx. We could have made it so we could just put sphere q here. Um, but okay, let's go ahead and look at this real quick uh, before we um, before we do uh, before we actually solve the problem. Okay, so there's now it looks from where I put it that sphere q is nowhere near the center. It, n it doesn't touch the umbra at all. Um, so let, let's see what we're doing here. Okay. So angle one, angle two. Um, so now what we're going to do is find the angle from here to here. Um, what am I doing? What am I talking about? Right, the angle between the connecting line here and this line here, actually we're going to find, we're going to use the dot product and find the, the arc cosine of it, but same thing. Um, and if that angle is larger, then we need to actually include a little bit of a, the R here, uh, because that angle is going to be a, be an issue too. Um, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. Uh, and if so if that that if that angle is not enough to bring it into the the cone of the sphere into the angle of the sphere, uh, then we know it, it's not obstructed. If it's um, if it's partly inside of the angle of the sphere, um, we know it's partly obstructed. And if we know it's fully within the angle of the sphere, um, it is completely obstructed. I think that made sense. Okay. So I think the first thing we need to do is just find the angle between the center to center. And I'm going to make this thing bigger, unfortunately. I think it was a bad idea to make it this small. Um, it's not. It's now too small to really be, be visible. Let's do this. Okay, there we go. Oh, and now it actually might end up being inside the umbra, but this this will be close. Um, and I do think we'll find a way to draw the umbra. I mean, there, I sort of have an idea of how we can do it. Um, okay, so the angle between, um, so the angle to Q is going to be the dot product of this thing to this thing, that is. And for those of you who don't know what that is, um, QIQ at YQZ minus the cone point. Uh, that is one vector. That's this vector. And the other vector is the vector that just basically, there's so many ways to find it. I'm just trying to figure out if there's a really, really clever way of doing it that I haven't thought of. Um, dot. I don't know if it'll let me do that space in there, but anyway. Um, I mean, one way to say this, this is T minus S. I mean, that's, that's not the only way to say it. But, uh, so I'll go ahead and do that, I guess. Um, I think I mean S minus T. And I don't even think that matters, but anyway. Okay, so... This is actually dot ang q because it's uh, it's the dot product. So with that, that tells us that uh, the angle between the uh, the cone and the um, and the center, which will tell us whether or not we have a um, a full obscuration, and then we need to figure out the uh, what the diameter of that looks like from from uh, from the conal point. Which is non-trivial because it's not a right angle triangle. It's not hard, but it's not trivial. So let's go ahead and do this, this, and hopefully nothing will crash. Um, so we're looking at ang one, ang two, which are like twenty some. What the hell? That's kind of low. But it's apparently going to be the same for angle two, seven degrees, seven degrees on each side. By the way, the whole width is fourteen degrees. Seven degrees is this this angle here, um, and then dot angle q. Oh, I think I I misspelled cone point. So the dot angle of Q is going to be 
I want to be careful here that I'm getting QX minus and then S minus T, right? That's how we did it? Yeah, that's how I meant to do it. Okay, awesome. Um, so what is, one of these things is not like the other. Cone point. Cone point should be a three-dimensional vector. Which it is. So the other thing is not a three-dimensional. Q, yeah, because I, I'm an idiot, that's why. All right, third time's a charm, maybe. That does not seem to be correct. That seems to be a little bit, because uh, uh, that would mean there's a 180 degree angle. So this is the um, the QX minus Q point is zero minus one one. Um, zero minus one one. And that, that actually sort of hard to see, but I don't think that's not a uh, that's not a uh, well crap is it? Well, I actually accidentally created a 90 degree angle, <laughs> although min yeah minus one would be negative 90. So that that wow, I am stupid. All right, so two three seven should not be a 90 degree angle, but let's bring it in a little bit closer. See what this does. Uh, now that's definitely not a 90 degree angle. Fortunately, the history does not appear to work across session. That actually looks okay. Uh, well, that actually looks impossible, doesn't it? And you know why? Because the vector angle between two uh, things is not the dot product, it's the dot product divided by the product of the lengths of the vectors. And not only that, but I think, yeah, Mathematica already has a vector angle function, so you know, just pretty damn stupid for me to try to create my own. So this is actually going to be angle Q, not uh, I'm a freaking moron. So let's see. And I don't even need these parentheses now because um, I know I'm not using a dot product. Okay, that looks... It's... That is an interesting view. This is like... You know, if I can get further away from this, if there was a way to zoom in and zoom out, I could actually see what the, uh, what, what the I could look at, I could be at the point of the umbral cone. Uh, okay. So now I Q. That's 17 degrees. That's 7 degrees. So it would look like this is um, outside the umbral cone. And it's kind of hard to see looking from this angle, but... Uh, means the center is outside the umbral cone. Now the question is whether, even though the center is outside the umbral cone, whether this little extra r here means that part of it touches the umbral cone. And to find that, we need to know the uh, angle between this vector to the center um, and this vector here. And because this is not a right angle, necessarily a right angle, um, that's that requires a little bit of trigonometry. Um, not not a lot of trigonometry, but a little bit, and then then if we know that this is uh, the the cone misses the edge, uh, this edge, uh, it's a miss. If the cone hits both edges, we can, we can get that as well, um, and I think that's going to be the same angle because I think this is going to be an isosceles triangle here. Uh, aren't I smart? Um, yeah, this is this, this is this, this is this, this is that. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and do that calculation in two dimensions because it's. Uh, I'm, I'm actually now worried that it might not be exactly what we want, but I think we can do that calculation in two dimensions, um, and then we could determine whether or not the the um, partial total eclipse. What's interesting is we can then use C spice to test all of this stuff, which is the entire goal with all of this, um, and see what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and save this before I forget to to get. Um, and I'm, what I was tempted to do something, I was tempted to, um, 
I mean, I could just draw the angle f to th between the cone point and this. That's not really hard to do. Um, the thing I'm having trouble doing is, even though I know this angle, I don't know what these edges of the sphere are. I mean, they're in the plane perpendicular to the line. Um, I could probably draw them, but um, I, I'm not sure I want to do that. So we could certainly draw this from this to the center, which I will do now, and that'll probably be the last thing I do. Um, and I think I can get rid of this now, because this is actually, the, the to the cone point is an extension of this line. So if I do this, this shouldn't change anything, and it doesn't. And now I can just do line... Um, going from QX, QY, QZ to the cone point. And if that works, we have a little bit of a better idea, but we're, we're, we're actually not, we're actually kind of, it's kind of ugly, there we go. It's kind of ugly now because we, the real line we sort of want is the line that goes from here to the edges of these spheres. Um, and that's a solid angle, that's a steradian. And there's no cone function, so we kind of have to be a little bit... I think we can determine the plane here and the plane here, um, because they're planes that go through a specific point and with a known perpendicular vector, and uh, so the dot product, anything in that plane is going to be zero. Um, and then from there we can figure out what this point is, because it's going to be distance r from the origin uh, of the uh, plane, I mean distance tr or sr, from the uh, plane of that origin. Unfortunately, I'm not sure that's exactly what I want to do, because I kind of want to draw the whole cone. I don't want to just draw the edges. Um, and so I'm wondering if there's a way to do that using, like, uh, if they had a cone primitive, that would be fantastic, but they don't. Uh, but I'm wondering if I can sort of get away with using a um, a bunch of uh, circles or something that they do have. Uh, the graphics 3D, unfortunately, is very appears to have very limited, uh, very limited. Well, polygon. Um, so I could draw a pyramid, maybe, uh, and it's a filled polygon, so I'd be careful. Point line. And you know, point might be sufficient actually, because we could draw a whole bunch of points. Um, and let's see, point, 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 and a polygon. So if I did draw a polygon, what would it be going from? It would be going from here, I'd still need to know what this point is, um, here, here, that's a triangle, but I don't know, that might work actually. That's actually a two-dimensional polygon being drawn in three dimensions. Okay, but for now. This stream, I don't know if it's a record actually, but two hours and 38 minutes, probably not even a record for me. I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream. Thank you for watching. Um, and let's see if we can pick this up next time. We're, we're, we've got a pretty good start going here. So bye for now.